Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. My friend Rob, who's also a Sile user, contacted me asking me if I could help him set up a parametric self-centering vise. Now previously on this channel, I've set up a traditional vise in a parametric way. I'll put a link to that video in the description so you can go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a self-centering parametric vise. I was just gonna make this video for Rob, but I thought that other people could benefit from it as well. So that's what I'm gonna go and do. I'll put a link to the Lang website where you can download the 3D model that I'm gonna use if you wanna follow along. And if you don't wanna follow along, but you still want a Lang self-centering vise, you can go to the data panel, go to all your projects, find the samples directory, and then cam samples. Go to the work holding folder, and in work holding, you'll see a folder named Lang. The style of vise I'm gonna to use today is the Macro Grip series. And in here, you'll see Imperial and metric versions of all their models. I'm gonna set these up the exact same way I set these models up in the work holding directory. I'm gonna start out by going to the file menu and choosing open. And I'm gonna to browse to where I downloaded the step file. And then I'll say open. Now when this opens up, you're gonna see that it comes in in the wrong orientation. and to make this parametric, you certainly don't have to make any changes to the orientation of the model. Personally, my idea with doing something like this is I'm gonna put a little effort into getting the vise set up the way that I want it so that when I use it over and over again down the road, I don't have to do any kind of special setup things. It's just ready to go for me. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to rotate this into the correct orientation by using the move copy command. And I have to take a look at what Fusion's asking me to move and what I have. So here you can see that I have components and Fusion's asking me if I wanna move bodies. I'm gonna change this to say components and then I can either select the components in the window or I can select them out of the browser. And now I'm gonna use the rotate option under the move type. And the rotate uh, axis I wanna do is I'm just gonna turn the origin on and I'll use this red, axis, red X axis right there, and I'll just rotate that by 90 degrees. Now I'm happy with that, so I'll hit OK. I'll right click and repeat the move copy command again. It's already set up for all the options I want, but I have to go reselect my components one more time. I'm gonna select an axis. This time I want the Z axis, which is a little bit more buried. I can get there, but it might be easier for me just to expand out the origin and select the Z and now I can rotate this negative 90 degrees, getting it set up the way that I want. I'm gonna do a couple other little cleanup things. Again, these aren't necessary. This is just some of the things that I like to do when I'm setting up my models. I'm gonna turn off the base, and under the Modify menu, I'm going to use the Align command, and I'm gonna select the middle face of this jaw, and I'm gonna select this XZ plane. And it's gonna move so those two faces are coplanar. I'll hit OK and I can repeat the align command and do the same thing on the other jaw. So let's go and reselect that plane and hit OK. I can turn my body back on now and now you can see that I've got my vise set up so it's exactly in the closed position. I'm pretty happy with everything. I haven't started capturing history yet and the reason for that is I really don't want moves and aligns and things like that showing up in my timeline. But now I'm ready to start doing some things. It would also be a good idea before you captured your design history, I guess it wouldn't really necessarily matter, but you may also at this point want to switch your units to inches if that is what you use. I'm just gonna leave this in millimeters for this particular exercise. To capture the design history, I'm gonna right click on the design name and choose capture design history. And now at the bottom of the screen, I'm gonna see everything that I do from this point forward will be captured. I'm gonna start out by creating an as-built joint. I have this base exactly where I want it to be. I don't want it to move. So I'll select an as-built joint between the base, and then I'm gonna click on the word origin, and I'm gonna click uh, create a rigid joint there when I hit okay. So now I can't move that base, but I can still move the jaw. So I'll just revert those back into position. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to turn off one of the jaws, and I also don't need to see the visibility of the origin right now, so I'm gonna turn that off just to make it a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna do another as-built joint. So from the assemble menu, I'm gonna select as-built joint, selecting the base first. I grabbed the wrong thing there, assemble as-built joint. Selecting the base first, 
and the jaw second. And now I'm gonna choose a slider joint type and I'm gonna move my mouse over this edge. Now, sometimes it can get a little tricky to grab that midpoint that I wanna grab there. If that's the case, hold down the control on Windows or Command on Mac and you'll automatically snap to that point. As the model starts to move, one of the things I'm looking for is when it expands out that the number is positive. So if I drag this out, you can see that way the number is positive. If I go the other way with it, the number becomes negative. I'll just revert that back into position. I can also add a joint limit onto this right now. So I can expand out my joints and I'm gonna go to this slider and I'm gonna turn on a minimum. I want that to be zero and the maximum, I'm gonna set that to be about 30 millimeters. Now you can either go measure your vise and see how much it can open up in this particular orientation, or you can maybe go to the manufacturer's website and get that information. I'll hit okay and everything will snap back, but now I can only move this jaw back and forth by 30 millimeters. I wanna repeat the process for the other jaw, so I'm gonna turn off the jaw that I just did and turn on the second jaw. And now I'm gonna go do that same assemble as built joint I'll select the base this time and the jaw, but you'll see something here that, again, it's probably more my OCD than it really matters. When I apply this joint and I drag this out, the number is negative, and I'd rather that number be positive. So I'm just gonna revert that back. I can delete that joint off, and I'll go reapply a different as-built joint. Unfortunately, there's no way to reverse this. So I'm just gonna do an as-built joint, but I'll select the moving jaw first and the fixed jaw second. And now I'll go grab that same point. I grabbed the wrong one. Let's try that one more time. That's where holding down the control of the command becomes handy. There I have it moving in the right orientation and I'll hit okay. Now when I drag it off, you see my number is positive and when I go the opposite way, the number is negative. So let's revert that back and I'll turn on my second jaw. Now, as I move these, it's not working the way a self-centering vise would work, so I have to add one more thing to it. From the assemble menu, I'm gonna go and add a motion link between my two slider joints. And I'll get a preview of what's gonna happen, and now when I hit okay, the vise will only go to close, and it'll only open up as far as I let it. So things are starting to work the way that I want. I think I'm pretty good with getting uh, the vise and the joint set up. Now it's time to work on getting my stock configured. From the modify menu, I'm gonna select change parameters and I'm gonna create some user parameters. The first one I'm gonna create is gonna be called stock width. This is my preferred method for adding parameters. I'm not saying this is right, this is just one of the things that I like to do is capitalize the different words inside of my parameter name. And I'm gonna give this a expression of 100 millimeters and I'll hit OK. I'm going to add another parameter called stock depth and I'll give that a value of 12 and I'll add another one called, oops, I just deleted that off, stock depth. Let's give that a value of 25 this time and then I want to do one more and I'm going to call this stock thickness. and I will give this a value of, let's call this one 12, and I'll hit okay. I'm gonna do one optional one that really you don't need to. It's just one, of, again, one of those preferences. I like to be able to shift the stock in the vise left or right. So I'm gonna create another one called X offset, and I'm gonna set this to be 10 millimeters, and I'll hit okay. Now it'd be a good idea to add comments about what these different um, parameters do, especially if you're working in a team setting. So if other people open this up, they can clearly see what these different parameters change. I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna right click on my design and I'm going to create a new component. And the component I'm gonna create is gonna be called stock. And I'll hit okay. Now I just wanna work on the stock. So just to clear my screen, I'm gonna right click on stock and I'm gonna to choose to isolate that component. So now all the other components disappear off the screen. I should also note that I haven't saved yet. I have no intention of saving this design. You may want to save this uh, at this point. I'm gonna create a new sketch on the top plane and I'm just gonna go grab the two point rectangle. I often find just grabbing the two point rectangle is more convenient, but I almost always change the type to be center rectangle. I'll do that over there in the sketch palette. 
Now, instead of typing in dimensions, I'm gonna type in stock depth for that particular one. And I'll hit tab, and this will be stock width. And I'll hit enter, and now I've got those values set to those parameters that I created. I'll finish my sketch, and I'm gonna extrude this up, stock thickness. So I'll start typing in stock, and then select that from the list, and hit OK. And there is my piece of stock. One more thing I'm gonna do is go expand out the bodies and find the body. I'll right click on it and go to the opacity control. And I like to set this to about 50%. You can set it to whatever your preference is. Now I can right click and unisolate to bring everything back. I am gonna turn off the body and then I'm gonna activate my top level component so I can see everything at the same opacity level. I can take my jaws and open them up to make things a little bit easier. And now I'm gonna go and add a joint. So from the symbol menu, I'm gonna choose a joint and I can choose one side or the other. Now, if I put my mouse over this face and I hover over that point, you see which direction my x-axis is pointing? That's gonna be my positive direction. And I think I'd rather have my positive direction go to the right. So if I just simply go to the other side and I hold down my control button or a command button and I hover over that point, you'll see that now my x-axis goes the direction I want. So I'm gonna select that point. And then I'm gonna to go to my jaw and I'm gonna select the corresponding point that I want. Again, I'm just gonna hover my mouse over that face, hold on my command or my control, and I can easily go grab that point. And the piece of stock moves into position. Now remember that X offset that I did? I'm just gonna drag this off the direction I want to go and it shows me that that's the 27 millimeter field right here. So I'm just gonna clear that and type in X and there's my X offset. And when I hit okay, you'll see that the stock is now shifted to the right slightly because of that X offset value that I gave it. I need to attach this jaw to the stock. So I'm again gonna do an assemble and a joint. And this time I'm gonna go grab that same point on the stock. So I'll hold my controller command to grab that point. And I'm gonna go grab the other face of the jaw. Now by default, because I'm doing a rigid joint, Fusion's gonna complain because it can't be aligned on one side and aligned on this side, but yet the stock shifted by 12 millimeters or 10 millimeters. So I'm just gonna go grab that point over here. It's gonna complain about it, that's fine. I'm gonna go to the motion tab and I'm just gonna use a planar joint which keeps that face attached to that part of the jaw. And I'll hit okay. And everything slaps into place and seems okay. I can turn my body back on and now we can give a little check to see if we've got everything working okay. At this point too, you may want to turn your joints off. So if I choose assemble, I'm sorry, modify, change parameters, I can go to my stock width and I can set this to 125 and I'll hit enter. You see the stock gets wider. If I go to my X offset and I type in zero and hit enter, it centers the stock in the vise. If I change my depth to be 12, it gets narrower. If I change my thickness to be 25, it should get thicker. Now, one of the reasons I added those joint limits is because if I put a piece of stock that's too small or too large, I wanna know about it before I go and find out on the machine. I know that the step on these jaws is three millimeters. So the when these two jaws are touching, the distance between those two jaws are six millimeters. So if I change my stock depth to six, everything will be okay. Those two jaws are now coplanar. But if I change that to be 5.9 millimeters, you see that I get an error showing me that that joint now fails because of the joint limit that I created. If I change it back to seven, everything is happy again. Same thing if I go up to 60 here. So that'd be the maximum. But if I go to 61, actually I guess it's probably 70 the way I did it. If I go larger, now you see that my joint fails because it's outside of the joint limit and I get visual feedback that there's some things that I need to change. If I go back and change it to a parameter that falls in between those joint limits, everything works as expected. So there you can see that you can download a vise from a manufacturer and pretty quickly get it set up to be parametric. Note that sometimes when you download vices from different manufacturers, the different 3D objects come in as bodies, in which case you'll have to convert those two components because you can only add joints to components. You can't add joints to bodies. I hope that helps to understand how you can set up a self-centering parametric vise. 
If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. You can also email me like Rob did to kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com with any ideas you have for a future YouTube video. As always, thanks for watching.